Warning, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, and perchloric acid are corrosive. Nitrogen dioxide is toxic. Perchloric acid and its salts, especially ammonium perchlorate, are explosive. Wear gloves when handling them and perform the aqua regia digestion step outside or in a well-ventilated area. Hi guys, here is MIH. First of all, I'm really sorry I haven't uploaded any videos for a really long time, and what I posted was only boring stuff like how to concentrate acid and how to buy solvents OTC. Here's why. I'm doing a couple of very cool projects such as using the ketene root to make acetic anhydride, synthesizing triphenyl perylium tetrafluoroborate for making silver tachromic dyes, making silver trioxide via the contact process, making palladium on carbon and platinum plate electrodes, and countless more. If any of these worked, I would have happily clipped together a video and published it as soon as possible, but none of them ended up working. I don't know if I just had bad luck, or is it actually my lab skills deteriorated, and I was having a really hard time accepting and reassessing these failures, but now I'm ready to retry some or all of these projects again. However, that would of course take some weeks to do and publish, so for now I'll just put up one of my mini projects that actually worked decently well, the small scale perchloric acid synthesis. As most of you know, there are three main routes of making perchloric acid. Distill in a mixture of sulfuric acid and potassium perchlorate, reacting hydrochloric acid with sodium perchlorate, and boiling aqua regia with ammonium perchlorate. The first method was reported to be extremely dangerous and prone to exploding, and the second method produced impure acid and required a large amount of concentrated hydrochloric acid. So I opted to go with the classic aqua regia method shown many times on YouTube, except that I'm going to make the ammonium perchlorate myself, since I can't buy it. I first weigh out my entire stock, or 22.24 grams, of sodium perchlorate. It appears yellow from the lighting, but that's fine. I then dissolved it in 33 grams of room temperature water. Using too much water may result in a loss of yield, as less ammonium perchlorate would precipitate out, so try to control the amount of water in 50 grams. I then add 15 grams of ammonium chloride, which represents a 60% molar excess, and boil the mixture. This excess is necessary to decrease the solubility of ammonium perchlorate, thanks to the common ion effect. When the mixture finally boils, some solids still remain, which is sodium chloride produced from a double replacement reaction. Making ammonium perchlorate from this reaction was possible, as the solubility of sodium chloride is nearly constant over temperature, while ammonium perchlorate is highly soluble in boiling water, but less soluble in cold water. Thus, at boiling temperatures, sodium chloride would precipitate, and force the equilibrium between the salts to the side producing ammonium perchlorate. If we remove the sodium chloride and cool down the remaining solution, ammonium perchlorate would precipitate, due to its decreased solubility, while sodium chloride still stays in solution. Of course, ammonium chloride and sodium perchlorate also have a steep solubility curve, so they might crystallize as well and end up as an impurity. To minimize this, I put a watch glass on the beaker to minimize loss of water vapor, as a decreased amount of water may increase the amount of ammonium chloride in the product. After around half an hour of boiling, I quickly suction filtered the mixture to remove the sodium chloride. Suction filtration is necessary here, as the ammonium perchlorate quickly crystallizes when the temperature starts to drop. I use a small amount of boiling water to wash the beaker and the sodium chloride, and recover as much of my product as possible. However, I then realized that I added way too much water, so I started boiling down the filtrate to around 30 mils and filtered off the sodium chloride precipitate. The ammonium perchlorate began to crystallize in the flask of filtrate. I filtered off these crystals and they weigh 7.5 grams. I bring the filtrate of this time to a boil again, and allow it to slowly cool to obtain more products. The ammonium perchlorate crystallized as beautiful needle-like crystals, which was mesmerizing to watch. After the mixture cooled to room temperature, I simply filtered it to harvest the second batch of crystals, and they weigh 4.5 grams. The two batches are combined and dried in the oven, and we end up with 10.83 grams of dry and mostly pure ammonium perchlorate. I tested the purity of the perchlorate by taking a small amount of crystals and heating it carefully with a blowtorch. Everything evaporated away and only a tiny amount of white salt remained on the spatula, which tells me that the ammonium perchlorate is at least free from sodium. The next step is to convert this ammonium perchlorate to perchloric acid by reacting with, with aqua regia. I add all of my ammonium perchlorate to a flask and slowly add it in around 10 grams of 70% nitric acid, which released quite a bit of gas. I then added 10 grams of 10% hydrochloric acid by diluting some 20% acid. The slightly yellow mixture was then set up for distillation. As it heats up, 
more nitrogen dioxide gases are formed as nitric acid oxidizes the ammonium ion and ammonium perchlorate to nitrogen and nitrogen oxides. All of the products, as well as nitric acid and hydrochloric acid themselves, can be boiled away at less than 120 C, while the azeotrope of perchloric acid in water boils at 200 C, so perchloric acid can be obtained by distilling this mixture. This trick of using oxidizers to remove counter ions such as ammonium ions is a useful strategy in preparing numerous acids that are difficult to prepare otherwise. The mixture boiled and the vapor front slowly rises up in the adapter. A catalyst liquid is dilted over shortly after, which should be mostly water and hydrochloric acid. After around half an hour, the distillation is slowed down to a crawl, indicating that low boiling components have been removed and were left with perchloric acid. I turned off the heating and transferred it to a beaker to further boil down. However, I accidentally tipped over the beaker containing the acid, and about half of it spilled on the hot plate. When I tried to wipe it up using a tissue paper, it surprisingly caught fire, which I thought was cool, and definitely proves that we have perchloric acid. I boiled my remaining acid down as much as I could, and ended up with 7.4 grams of perchloric acid with a density of 1.48 which corresponds to 55% perchloric acid by weight, and a yield of 43%. If I hadn't spilled my acid, my yield would have been doubled, which is 86%, a decent number judging from my shed quality chemicals and crew procedure, and further confirms the reliability of this aqua regia procedure. I plan to use this acid in some organic synthesis, as well as making metal perchlorates. See you soon!